Power. Let's get over to our um, chief meteorologist, Dr. Steve Caparata. Uh, as the storm starts to move in here to our metro area, we want to check in on some of the folks right here in our viewing area. Hey, Steve. Hey guys, yeah, and so when it comes to the power outages, down trees, th things like that, remember it's kind of a, a cumulative effect at, at times. It's not just that one big gust. If we've got these persistent winds for a while, that can start to take more and more stuff down with time. So here's what we've got on radar right now. There's no doubt about it. The, the heaviest stuff, the worst of it, is closer to New Orleans at this hour. This system is looking less and less tropical with every hour that goes by. It doesn't mean impacts are, are not significant and in fact they just upgraded this flash flood warning in the New Orleans area gave it a considerable tag so that's a concern there that's westward through Laplace we've got some pretty nasty stuff in the St. James Parish and then you can see uh, these moderate uh, occasionally heavy rains in Metro Baton Rouge that are producing the tropical storm force gusts largely that continues east along I-12 at this hour you go west from Baton Rouge out over the basin, it dries out in a hurry. Those of you in Point Capi Paris have seen some passing showers, but not as much rain. And those of you in southwest Mississippi, it's been the off and on showers today, but not as much as areas to your east and southeast. One other thing we had a little while ago, looks like it may have been allowed to expire. We had a tornado warning in uh, St. Tammany Parish around Eden Isle, so that is always concerned as well. But again, looks like that warning may have been allowed to expire. All right, look at uh, some of the big rains that have come down. This is what we said. It wasn't going to be a widespread flood event, but any time you have a landfalling tropical system where you get the heaviest bands, the strongest bands, you get the heavy rain, right? And you can kind of see how wrapping around the circulation as it's been moving inland from Morgan City up to uh, near Napoleonville, Labadeeville, near north of Thibodeau, up in the St. James Parish, back to near Raceland, Des Alamans, up in the St. Charles, St. John the Baptist Parish, and now some of the heavier rains building into New Orleans. I think we're going to be hearing a bit more about that. Let me go back to that map for a second. I want to. Um, there we go. Uh, I do want to bring this back up a little closer to Metro Baton Rouge and just show you here. Largely the rain so far in our part of the world have been manageable. Shades are blue. Uh, you're generally looking at two inches of rainfall or less. And same story as you get near north of the state line. Now as you get in the southern parts of Livingston Parish, Tangibaho and around the lakes, uh, the rain's a little bit heavier as well. All right, here's our Sky 9 view from Port Allen. The camera's still bouncing around. I'm not trying to diminish the impacts that we're feeling. Uh, we're certainly getting tropical storm force gusts, but the worst is staying a bit east and south east of Baton Rouge at this hour. 76 degrees, northeast winds 26, gusting to 45 almost any other day of the year. That would be a pretty big headline to see winds like that, but given that we have a, a landfalling hurricane that came ashore technically as a category two, uh, to have wind gusts in the 40s and 50s in Baton Rouge right now, not as bad as it could have been. Gonzalez gusting to 47, Homa 58. New Orleans or Kent are gusting to 55 right now. Uh, you can see down around Port Fouchon, 64. So we're getting a lot of uh, tropical storm force winds and occasionally probably some hurricane force gusts in that heavier band. But right now, it's mostly tropical storm force winds showing up. I'll give you a look at the uh, satellite and radar. As this came ashore, kind of looked like a hurricane, right? It's quickly losing that appearance, which was modeled pretty well and anticipated because of two things, that wind shear that we talked so much about, and especially the dry air that is being wrapped into the circulation for the west and southwest, which is really eroding the south side of the hurricane. You notice how the south side is almost rain-free. That's not typical. So that's good news. As we get uh, these bands lifting northward here, the next few hours, uh, things will really start to improve pretty quickly. It'll stay breezy overnight, but the worst of the winds for most areas are going to be over the next few hours. Looking at time, it's what, 748? Um, so I think, you know, Baton Rouge southward by or before midnight, the threat's really going to have diminished near north of the state line. May take just a little bit longer than that. All right, checking in on the A-meet and Co-meet rivers. Here's the latest. 
again, uh, we'll, we'll probably get some updated forecasts later on tonight uh, for some of these points. Uh, but right now, Denham Springs, Bayou Manchac Point, Port Vincent. Uh, I forgot to, Pokey texted me his uh, stage from Bayou Manchac Point. I forgot to update that. But uh, we are uh, right now currently forecast to stay just below flood stage from Denham down to Port Vincent. French Settlement and Moripaw are forecast going to flood. In fact, Moripaw's in flood. That's because you feel more of the impacts of essentially the surge coming through Lakes Pontchartrain and Moripaw. And then you get the backwater flooding. And then we keep an eye to see how much rain comes down on top of that. Right now, my thinking is it's not going to get too much worse than what is currently forecast. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Comita Jor currently forecast stay below flood stage. And given what we're seeing right now, radar trends with most of the rain staying, the heavier rain staying southeast of Baton Rouge, uh, at this point, I'm not expecting major issues on the Comita. One more thing I wanted to show you, just the, the 10 day outlook here. Uh, we do have power outages. You've been hearing that through the evening now. Depending on where you are, they'll be more or less uh, widespread. But for those dealing with the power outages, it is important to note it's going to warm back up fairly quickly. It's not going to be extreme heat, but it's going to be typical late summer heat in our part of the world. 86 for a high tomorrow, but we're back to 90 or above roughly into the weekend. So please be careful with that. Number one, if you have to do cleanup work, uh, be careful with the heat, heat exhaustion, things like that. Number two, the generators, uh, as you run those, as you get hot and you run the generator, that carbon monoxide threat. You've got to have proper ventilation. You got to have it at least something like 20 to 25 feet from your home. You want to position the exhaust of that generator so that it's going away from your home. And please have carbon monoxide detectors in your home if you're going to run it. Even if you follow the safety tips, you can still end up with some of that in the house. And it's, it's odorless. So unless you have a detector, you're not going to know it, guys.